My spell hasn't worked yet. What did I do wrong? Now, the advice you'll get from many professional magicians, so ones that work in magic, many different kinds, or even just spiritual practitioners in general, is that if you're asking this question, why didn't my spell work? Uh, did I do anything wrong? Usually, you're asking it too early. And you should have put the spell out of your mind to begin with. You should have distanced yourself from that working in a way that this question wouldn't pop up. You should have assumed that it was going to work. And because you're asking this question, obviously you didn't assume that it was going to work. And you're starting to question the work that you did. Um, this is the, um, this is magician advice that I've heard from many, you know, <laughs> many, um, talented practitioners, many, um, talented magicians. But, um, there's some other elements I'd like to advise. Now, my advice is that you need to keep a journal, write down everything that you did exactly and keep on every and date it and say, you know, what elements you used, um, what beings you called upon or spirits you called upon, if you called upon any, and when you expected it to happen. Um, now, when you keep this journal, it's very important to, while you document everything that you do, to not allow it to basically keep it on your mind. Do not allow this to, do not allow your journal to make you think of the spell again and again and again. There is some truth to the idea that you really need to put it out of your mind to such an extent that you won't ask this question. That is a very good piece of advice, but it's also very good to keep a journal about what you did and if it ever manifested. Uh, you should give magic a good amount of time to manifest. Um, and if you're not willing to wait, you're going to have to put a lot more energy into a spell. Um, commitment. Now, you have to be very committed to your craft. If you did not incorporate most of what you know into a spell, or most of what has worked, with, worked for you before into a spell, into a spiritual working, then you're only doing it half-assed. You have to put, you have to throw yourself into every uh, magical pursuit, every spell that you cast, every working you're trying to make happen in your life. You have to really throw it everything, the kitchen sink at it. <laughs> you have to, you have to try to, try to really make it happen. Um, if you only use a few elements and you only use a little bit of understanding, then it, it's, it's not going to be as potent. So, you know, even if you only use a few elements, let's say you're just doing a candle magic spell and you want to put a little bit of your blood on the outside and have a piece of parchment underneath that candle. And then after the candle is done burning, then you burn that parchment and kind of allow it to mold itself into ash and then mark your head with it. I'll give an example. Um, you need to incorporate at least all of your understanding into this. What are you writing down? What are you saying as you apply blood to the candle? And what symbols are you making upon your forehead with that ash? To name just very specific examples, but um, the understanding behind what you do all of your understanding needs to be incorporated, even if all your implements and what you usually work with are not incorporated, your understanding must be one-pointed. Everything that you are must be one-pointed upon this magical action. Um, now, either understand time or account for it. So, either understand that this spell might not happen when you want it to happen, might happen further down the road, be willing to accept that, or account for time when you're doing the working. Basically saying, you know, this will happen in a certain amount of time. It is very limiting for a magical act, for sure. It can, it can cause problems as far as uh, if you don't put enough energy into it, then it might not be able to happen in the amount of time that you want it to happen in. But um, if you're going to, if you're going to really try to make it happen immediately, you need to make time a part of the spell. And you need to not only make time a part of the spell, but also incorporate all of your spiritual and mental assets into the spell, even if you don't use all of your implements. That way, you can, uh, you can kind of uh, spar with time on par with what you want to happen and the amount of time you want it to happen in. It isn't always easy to tell if a spell has worked. Um, I've done a number, <laughs> I've, I've done countless spells. Um, I've worked with countless beings uh, that I've incorporated into this spell. I've, I've gotten powers that are beyond myself uh, focused on the spells that I'm doing or the workings that I'm doing uh, so that I have powers behind my efforts. 
so that it's not just my effort, so that there are multiple beings that are trying to make this happen. And you also have to be careful with the amount of beings that you add into a spell. So if you're going to ask Papa Legba to do something in your life, um, and you incorporate uh, Ben Osamedi, Mama and Bridget, and Kalima, then you there's some doubt in your head as to if Papa Legba can just do this one thing. Um, you have to be careful about that, because if you if you put a lot of different influences behind a single working, then not only is there doubt in your head, but you're also going to have multiple beings trying to do the same thing through their own through their own means, uh, through their own efforts, and a lot of the efforts, a lot of directions might um, might not work together. Maybe uh, Pavalegba and Kalima might not do might not perform this task for you or help you in this endeavor in the same way. So there might be a conflicting, there might be a conflicting element so that it actually doesn't happen because of that, uh, because there's too many conflicting energies. So be very careful with that. Um, and to be honest, one of the reasons I work with blood so much is because it really works compared to any other implement you can add into a spell, whether it be candle magic, whether it be uh, running your blood into parchment. So does blood ink is really great, but it's not as strong as your own personal elixir. And, um, you know, when you're casting your will into an endeavor, um, your blood is a very powerful extension of that will. So always think of that as an implement, an ingredient that will enhance whatever you're doing. Even if you're not incorporating spirits and gods, different beings uh, from different realms, you want to capitalize on your own willpower to the best of your ability. And there's no better extension of your will than your own blood. Um, you know, if your, if your spell isn't working the way you want it to work, don't give up and don't cast the same spell. Do not cast the same spell with the same wording, with the same implements, um, with the same beings or spirits. Um, don't repeat too much of the process. If your spell did not work, make a new spell that is slightly different to throw at a, throw at a problem that you're trying to solve for yourself. It, uh, it's very important that you don't just try to stack spells on top of spells that are trying to do the same thing because ultimately they'll kind of negate each other and they'll fight against, the influences will fight against each other and then uh, nothing will happen in your life. So be very careful. Um, never cast the same spell twice. Always alter it. And be sure to understand your motivations, your intentions. So if I want to... If I'm just going to give an example of something I've done years back... Uh, if I want to bring love into my life, romantic love, uh, I mean, I create a, I create a, a magic bottle, um, basically a spell that incorporates a bottle, all the implements in it, and then uh, I put it somewhere on my property so that that will attract love to me. If I'm going to do that, then I wouldn't, and then it still doesn't manifest within the time frame that I expected it to, or even if I wrote it into the spell and it didn't didn't happen, um, I'm not going to do the exact same bottle again with a few different implements. I'm going to do something completely different to achieve the same aim. Because you want to achieve the aim, but you're, you're going to have to do something different in order for uh, you to hit it from a different perspective, different angle. Uh, because obviously there was some blockage there or some lack of commitments or lack of understanding or uncertainty there that didn't allow this spell to happen. So you don't want to repeat what you've done before because ultimately you'll take apart your other spell and perhaps even close the door on this opportunity that you have. So always hit it from a different perspective, different wording, different implements, a different understanding, even if the goal is the same. You have to work with the manure of the spell and the dirt, uh, planting those seeds for that spell in different spots. You can't, you know, if you fail at growing this plant that is a spell, bring it to a fruition in your life. And the product of the spell being something you want to manifest in your life, then you're not going to try to plant the same seed in the same spot or in the same way. Experiment. Grow your repertoire of both spells and, and instruments that you use and ingredients that you use. Keep on growing. Alter it. Do not repeat it. It's very important. Um, so, you know, the question that I get often, like I said, is my spell has not worked yet. What did I do wrong? Um... I think I've covered a lot of bases, but the number one thing you need to realize is that sometimes you have to work at something and not just follow the instructions of others, but really create your own book of instructions. 
your own relationship to uh, these these beings, these spirits, these implements, um, these ways of casting a spell. You need to have it as a personal connection to your understanding and these these things that you are casting, these things that you're using. If you if you um, if you have your own personal understanding and you're not just following the recipe of another magician or witch or uh, a practitioner, then you're much more connected to the process. And being connected to the process of a spell is very important. More important than the implements that you use or the ingredients that you use. It's you making it very much connected to yourself, your own understanding, and how you understand magic works. You have to understand how magic works. You can't just use a recipe and then hope that the magic will work. You have to understand magic. You have to, be, you have to relate it to yourself. It has to be ingrained into your own understanding as you evolve as a magical practitioner. So I hope that this has helped a little bit. <laughs> the topic was one that it's really hard to address for anybody who asked me this question, but I really, I really tried to address it because this is something that I felt in the past before I could really see the effects of my spells in a different way. Um, when you change your perspective about what's being achieved, and perhaps you weren't specific enough, then you start to realize that, yeah, you, the spell worked, but I wasn't casting um, what I wanted to achieve. I wasn't casting something that would produce the product uh, in my life that I wanted to be there. So it's all about an evolution in magic. Um, the topic was, my spell has not worked yet. What did I do wrong? Um, perhaps... You did something wrong, but don't do it again. <laughs> do something different. And perhaps you didn't do anything wrong. Maybe it's just taking longer than you thought. If you don't incorporate time, uh, if you don't incorporate the idea that it'll take time, then at least count account for time. And make it a part of the ritual and put that much more effort into it. And, you know, if it doesn't work still, just uh, keep on keep on evolving. Don't don't ever stop with your practice just because it feels like it's not working. Uh, you just need to change a few things, change it up, and you'll find that your experience in magic, with magic, working with magic, the underlying currents of reality, will be will slowly blossom over time as you learn, as you become more connected to that stream that you're working with. At any rate, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video at all, hit that thumbs up down there. I greatly appreciate it. It helps out the channel. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, shoot them down in the comment section below on YouTube. I'd love to hear your questions. I will try to get to every single comment, as I usually do on YouTube. And uh, if you want to become a patron, if you want to just donate a dollar a month to help this channel, to help me actually put out more put out more videos, but also buy the right implements and ingredients so I can give you the best experience possible, Feel free to donate just a dollar a month at uh, www.patreon.com slash darkrealist, capital D, capital R. And then when you donate just a dollar a month, you actually get extra content on the channel as well. Um, there's certain videos that I do not post to YouTube, or if I do, it's in a private list, so you can't see it unless you become a patron because I publish everything on Patreon. So if that's something that you're interested in, more content, maybe some writings that I do, um, just a dollar a month can get you that, plus you help support the channel, which I greatly appreciate. At any rate, thank you very much for watching, and hope all of you find yourselves, and have a great day.